Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Elias and you're watching Garden Forge. Today I want to show you my summer garden. I have a lot of stuff growing in my garden right now. It is July 23rd, 2022 and I moved into this house September 15th of 2020. So it's been less than two years and let me show you how I've transformed my yard into a bountiful garden and I've also planted fruit trees and in a few years from now I'll have a food forest in my house and I'll have to do very little work to maintain this space and I will get plenty of production. This is what the front of my house looks like. I have flowers planted at the very front and you can see I got rid of my lawn and replaced that with with arborist wood chips. That way I can build soil and I don't have to water as much anymore and you can see how much production I have. The first plant I want to show you and it's my pride and joy this year is the Glove Artichoke. Check out how beautiful this thing is. I've never grown this one before. It's perennial to a zone 7 but you have to figure out a way to keep the plant alive through winter and if you keep it alive through winter it will on its second year it will produce a stalk in the center you can see the stalk here and then it will create a artichoke at the top if you cut this top off you can actually get secondary growth on these guys here and you can see there are secondary artichokes on here i want to save the seeds so i haven't caught this one and i'll show you guys in a later video what the flower of an artichoke looks like it's supposed to be very beautiful if you want to grow something in your front lawn that does not look like a vegetable but it's producing vegetables grow some okra they're in the hibiscus family they look like another hibiscus plant but you you can see i have plenty of okra growing in between here and the other one that you should be growing is artichokes because they produce beautiful artichokes but the foliage does not look like it's a vegetable it looks uh, more of an ornamental so i would recommend that you grow okra and artichokes so as you enter my house you can be welcomed by some lovely basil some butterfly weed some snapdragons Comfrey that I finally got my hands on. This one's gonna grow big and I'm gonna use it to shop and drop. And then I have some beautiful hollyhocks. Check out that spider on that hollyhock. Right there. Ooh, it's fancy looking. And then I have this hibiscus. Check out how beautiful this thing is. I have so many of these every morning they put out tons and tons of flowers. I planted these last year because I had too many bulbs. This gladiolus is, and I have so many of them this year. And over here I have dahlias. These are beautiful. I'm pretty sure this is a mimosa tree that has volunteer here. I am going to let it grow for a few years. And then I'm gonna cut it down and use the leaves as mulch. Look at my can of flour. This is my can of flour. And it's doing quite well. And I'm happy about this one. It makes me feel like I am in the tropics. Farther down I have lavender. This is my herb bed. I have lavender here. These here are my peppers. My peppers haven't done too much this year. This whole bed here was a little bit too shaded for them. So I cleared out the bed and now they seem to be very happy. Look how f thick they are. This jalapeno here, I grew last year. And at the end of the season, I dug it out and I put it in a pot and I brought it indoors. And I grew it indoors like, a, like an indoor plant. It did not produce indoors. But once I put it outside this spring, it was so happy and now it is growing jalapenos. I'm growing a ton of cone flowers. Uh, I'm hoping to make a tincture out of this. You can make tinctures with two year roots. So this uh, fall, I'm gonna dig up the roots, put it in some vodka and make uh, an immunity booster out of the, out of the roots. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Over here I have some marigolds. 
and then I have some other peppers that also got shaded by those flowers right here and that's I'm kind of getting concerned because maybe I'm not gonna get a pepper harvest this year or much of a pepper harvest but that's okay there will be other things to eat this is my sweet potatoes somebody gifted me four or five plants the other day and I just put them into the ground so these are quite small but I'm hopeful that they will produce a few potatoes for me a few sweet potatoes I have more peppers here then I have some lonely pepper that is right there this bed actually will get turned into fall vegetables very soon I have a I've started my fall vegetables indoors and these I'm saving for that this is a bloody butcher corn and it's not doing too well I had to put this fencing wire down because the the squirrels are after the kernel when you just put the plant in so if they can get to it they will eat it up but if you put a barrier like this they can't get their hands into there so easily so they don't bother it anymore so I recommend if you have squirrels put this up uh, when you plant your corn I put this in as seedlings and they were digging them up over here I have some San Marzano tomatoes and I have a ton of tomatoes in this in this one let's check out how much how many tomatoes I have this year I am hoping to make tomato sauce out of these so what I've been doing is I harvest them and I put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and they're going directly into the freezer right now later in the fall when I have time I'm gonna make the sauces and I'm gonna can the sauces uh, it's gonna be a little less hot I have a carrot here who that is going to bloom so I gotta harvest this one see I have some carrots in here I can't imagine these being too big because the soil is not very soft but I, nonetheless I have carrots this is a citromelo lemon my buddy over at it is just gardening gifted this to me and I have it right here and it's not growing a lot but I see a little bit of new growth so I know that it's it's now growing so that's that's great news this is the japonica purple corn it's got the variegated leaves and it's so beautiful look at those variegated leaves and it's got some tassels now and let's see if it has any oh yeah it's got plenty of pollen so I'm gonna be doing some uh, hand pollinating of, the, of this of this corn to ensure that I get some full ears of corn in this bed I have all sorts of crazy stuff going on I have peppers a pomegranate tree elephant garlic cauliflower that has not produced anything I have a lot of white flies this year they don't really affect anything so I don't do anything for them so that's okay I have some lacinato kale that looks like a tree now because I've been harvesting all the leaves from the bottom this one is actually even taller check that out and in here very soon I'm gonna be putting in my fall vegetables a lot of Napa cabbages tat soy bok choy stuff like that in this bed I've already planted my fall vegetables and I direct sowed those and I can see over here a little spinach sprout it's right here this is my first spinach sprout and that is great news and over here I planted some peas and I see the very first pea sprout right there tiny but it is there and I've just put in this trellis here and this is where I'm gonna grow the peas so over here I have peas spinach and I'm pretty sure I have beets in the middle and carrots at the end so start your fall garden now if you're in zone 7 because you can get a head start in the fall by just planting some of those seeds now you can direct sow peas, carrots, spinach and beets I see the beet sprouts right here tiny 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 right there this bed here was from the spring planting you can see it hasn't grown a whole lot this are broccoli and they did not do anything they became very small and stunted and they never produced anything so I've been clearing the bed slowly but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip these guys out and then put in more broccoli and more kale so I'm gonna put in new plants in hopes that I get a crop in the fall 
because the spring crop did not work. Some failures and some successes. This year, the spring was a little too cold at the beginning. Then we had a hot spell for about two weeks and then we went right back to cold. So that stunted the growth on all of my spring crops. And I didn't have much of a spring crop this year. So that's okay. Every year we have to learn to deal with uh, whatever the weather gives us and then adjust and adapt. So uh, hopefully the summer crops produce with intensity this year. This is my side garden. I have a lot of squash growing and a lot of a lot of different things on this trellis. Let me show you how crazy it has become. So this trellis, uh, I am growing, mainly I am growing a grapevine on it. But in the meantime, it's not big enough. So I'm growing cucumbers and a blackberry in between. So here, a cu these are pickling cucumbers and these have been doing quite well this year. It hasn't been bothered by the pests that usually bother the 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 cucumbers. Usually I get like a, a rust on them, or like this one, see? Usually I get this and it gets all over all the plants and it kills the plants prematurely. But this year I've collected well, a lot of cucumbers from this plant and I'm pretty excited and happy about that. I am missing a few cucumbers, you see that one back there. I'm gonna use that guy as seeds because it's way past its prime. That's a pickling cucumber, too yellow to be used now. I have these small tomatoes that are very tart and I use them in salsas because they're so tart. You don't even need to use lime to make your salsa. Uh, I'm also growing this squash vine here. This is a ornamental uh, squash, the ones that you put up for decorations, but all squash is edible. So like you see it right there, it's actually, it'll, it just looks like a patty pan squash. So if you cut them small, you cook them just like a zucchini and they taste pretty good. So don't be afraid to go some ornamentals. Let some mature enough so they can use them as decorations in the fall, but eat a lot of them too. No problem with that. Check out these beautiful flowers. Ah, there is a female flower. Oh, I'm gonna have another one. So pretty. Then I have this grape here. This is a seedless, conquer grape that about two years ago and I saw yesterday they're starting to ripen yeah here they're turning color and those are really cool but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to eat them because the animals are eating everything on this trellis and I haven't figured out a way how to get rid of the pest there's another cucumber right here and there's a little one behind it this is a blackberry that is just vigorous this year and it's growing everywhere but uh, I'm just letting it do its thing and maybe I'll take some clippings later on and make some cuttings and then move it around because I want more of these blackberries everywhere they they are thornless so that's the, the great thing about these I have a fig tree in here you see this this is a last fig tree I have fennel growing in here I have a melon growing on here as well and I have my first fruit set for this plant right here. My regular melon. I have asparagus, a fig tree, tomatoes, and this is a leek flower. So pretty. It's crazy. I am so proud of my corn this year. I planted this a little late. It was June 30th when I planted these. But I've been watering like crazy. I have my rain barrels right over there and I grab five gallon buckets and I give each bed a five gallon bucket every time I water. And they are enjoying that watering and they have grown so tall and so quickly. So I'm very happy about that because I'm running against the clock on this one to beat my first frost in order to harvest the kernels to make tortillas out of it. Over here it's a quite a weedy mess. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how, how to handle this side of the fence this year just because um, it gets weedy every every year. I think I'm gonna add a bunch of wood chips in here uh, just to keep the weeds down a little bit. But so far so good. I'm growing a lot of stuff in this beds. Uh, I am growing blackberries. I am growing collard greens. I am growing tomatoes. And then over here, this is how I keep my blackberries protected from the birds. And then I have a beautiful cabbage right here. 
and a second cabbage over here. I have a grapevine here. This one's my pride and joy. I used to have this grapevine at my old garden. I, I had a community garden for 11 years and check out the thickness on this vine. And at the bottom, it's a lot thicker. Here's my, my, my trunk of this grape. I dug it out last fall and I brought it here and I put it into the ground and I was so afraid if it was gonna survive or not. But it sprouted and I was growing and I can save my grapevine. I'm so happy about this one. This one is a, a seeded conquer grape. So that one's very tasty. I used to make grape jam out of that one. It's so good. I have a few papa trees that are growing finally in their final location. These are about four foot tall. These are you also used to be at my other garden and I dug them out and I brought them here. And so they've been a little bit stunted a little bit because I kept moving them back and forth between things. But now they're, they're in their final home and they're five, five-ish years old. Yeah, five years old. So I, I should be able to get a few um, fruit of these maybe in two years. They say seven years for those guys. This is my elderberry bush. The birds, <laughs> there's supposed to be berries here. The birds eat all of them. As soon as they turn a little bit brown and purple, they take them all. So um, I have to cover my other bush. I covered my other bush in order to have some berries. Um, but this one is a sacrifice for the birds. The birds are eating this one. Over here I have more okra. I have to harvest okra today because okra you have to check every day otherwise they get too big and then woody and you can't eat them anymore. These right here it's a weed but we eat these in El Salvador and I eat them here too. These are called moras and they are tasty more like a bitter spinach I would say. In between here I have a native passion fruit growing and it hasn't produced any flowers yet but I'm hopeful it will start producing some flowers soon. Cause I want to see these in bloom. They're so beautiful. And the passion fruit itself is also edible. But, but I don't know if I'm going to get any this year. <laughs> this is my enclosure for my elderberries. You might not be able to see it through the video. But there's a mesh here. And I, it's all over the place. And what I've done is I put a bamboo stake. I put a cup on top of that. And then I put the mesh over it. That way the mesh doesn't go down. Doesn't go down and get stuck. So that's a... Uh, Neat little trick that I found. Check this out, just like that. And look at the, the berries. I mean, they're doing happily in there. And yesterday I harvested uh, almost three pounds. And they're in the freezer now. Check out how this kale is doing. This one's very happy, but a lot of flies. I think I'm gonna spray this one with neem oil because I wanna eat it. And I don't really want to be eating flies. So I'm going to be spray, spraying this with neem oil and soap. This is my small three sisters garden. This one here gets shaded by the garage and then by that tree. So it's not growing a lot. The corn is not growing too much. But what is growing is the squash, which is crazy because you think squash needs a lot of sun to produce. But not really. This one is producing plenty of squash just from the little sun that it gets here. And look at here, you have beautiful flowers and there's tiny little corn. <laughs> I haven't been getting beans yet, so I'm hopeful that I'll start getting some beans sometime soon because I, I need some beans. I would like some beans. I have squash over here. Over here I have some squash. Uh, and so far, no females on that one. My fig tree is here. I saw someone comment on a different video that isn't it too late for figs. It really depends on your fig tree. There is fig trees that, varieties that give you a very early harvest and there's figs that give you a harvest later on in the season. This one is a Chicago Hardy and it's a late ripening variety. This one ripens in September for me. So I should be okay and being able to get some bright figs before the frost. My first frost is not until technically it says on on the books it says october 15th but in reality i've never seen one that early it, it's always the beginning of i always get like two to three weeks more so it could be 
the beginning of November or like the middle of November for a frost. These here I'm turning into a different rice beds. You can see all of that is wood chips and I've been spreading wood chips all summer long and my pile is now gone, no more wood chips. So I'm ready to order more wood chips. But before that, I gotta get rid of my compost that I bought in the other day. So I'm gonna be spreading that compost, fitting, filling up all my pots with compost. And once I'm finished with that, I'm gonna order more wood chips because wood chips, you can never have enough and I can spread them around the garden. This is my pergola that I made out of bamboo. I roasted this bamboo to get rid of the oils and kind of cure it a little bit. Ever since I've learned that you actually need to use a different method, like a chemical method to get, to preserve it, but that's okay. I think this one should last a couple of years. And what I was hoping for is to grow these beans here. And I'm hoping they, they grow up on this trellis that I have here. You can barely see it. But you can grow this trellis on here and then I can jump the plants to go onto the trellis. So I'm still hopeful that that will happen. I guess we still have like three months and they should grow a little bit more. So I'm hopeful about that. Let's enter the back orchard. I have a lot of stuff growing in here. To my left, there is all the banana plants. I moved them to the back of the house this year. I just wanna make sure that when they grow tall, um, they kind of cover this area a little bit, give me a little privacy. And then these are Jerusalem artichokes. These are humongous this year. And you know, you grow these for the tubers. So I'm growing the Jerusalem artichokes for the tubers. I've had them in the past. I don't have any issues with them, but some people get some, um, some stomach issues when they eat them. So if you've never grown them or eaten them before, go slow. I bought this persimmon tree this year, and this is a Fuju persimmon. And this produces beautiful yellow fruit that is about this big. And you can eat them when they're really hard or you can let them get softer. This fruit will hang in the tree for a few frosts. So this is the last fruit of the season. So that's why I really wanted one of these in my, in my garden. This right here is another Chicago hardy fig and it already has a ton. And over here I have some yellow jalapenos. So we have jalapenos here but they're not too big because I planted these not too long ago. So hopefully very soon we're gonna have some stuff. And in between here, I'm gonna be planting more fall crops. So I haven't planted too many things into here. This plant right here is a taro. I went to the Asian grocery store and I sprouted the taro and I put it into the ground and check out how much it's grown in just a few months. I think it went in in the beginning of May and it's already having a little side shoot right there. Oh, that's so nice. So I'm excited about this one. You can eat the taro and I'm gonna be eating taro because I grew up eating taro. We call it malanga. This is what the back orchard looks like. Uh, in the winter, I created new trellises. So I created this trellis here. This is about 40 foot long, I believe. And this one here is probably a little less, so maybe 15 foot long. Uh, so what I do is I am growing the I am growing the tomatoes on a bamboo stake. You can see the bamboo stake here. I grow it as a single stem as much as I can, and then after they get to the top, I push the tomatoes into the trellis. So I'm getting quite a bit of production. Check out these tomatoes. I have so many tomatoes. Actually, I have less tomatoes than last year, but these are way bigger. These are bigger than last year's tomatoes. So I'm excited about that. I'm okay with having bigger tomatoes rather than, than the small one, dinky ones I had last year. I have a musk melon in this, in this uh, trellis as well. There's a fruit set right here. And there's one that is pretty big on the other side. So I'll show it to you guys on the other side. Check out the size of this tomato right here. So this is what you can get if you do single stem. You can get a size like this. That's a pretty decent sized tomato. And I have two of those that size right there. Then I have this other tomato here. I have beef steaks, Cherokee purples, and a giant tomato that is not so giant and uh, ace 55 which is a round just regular slicing tomato and the zan marzanos and let's see i'm up to five and i have more that i'm growing i'm growing the the little round ones that are tart the yellow tomatoes 
and the sweet 100s so maybe about eight varieties i'm growing this year look at this sunflower right here this is my height this is about five seven and look how tall it is it's probably 10 foot 11 foot tall it's incredible so that's good because i take off all the stems from here because this would create shade for my plants but if you cut off all the stems and then you let it grow then you can still have a sunflower and not shade your garden check out the peppers that i have here these are doe hill peppers and they are very small plants but they produce quite a bit uh, i don't know why but the, the fruit set hasn't been crazy this year but that's okay i planted i think 48 of these plants so even if i get just one pepper from each plant i'll still get 48 peppers they're small they're about this big when they're ripe and they're yellow and they're super sweet so i really like them this is a country gentleman white corn and it is quite tall and it has quite a bit of corn on, on it already i did a lot of hand pollinating on this because i want to make sure that i have full that i have full years of corn and i think i've run out of pollen there's no more pollen on those tassels so hopefully i'll take some from this new one that is producing tassels now but i had one that was so early on that i think this one's going to be ready soon because i this one was the very first one then i have some beans growing in here as well i forgot to show you guys this one this is a um, asian pear and the uh, squirrels ate the tops of this one in the beginning of the spring they at the top here and then it had to force my tree to put in new branches this year so this is all new growth from this year and it's looking a little janky i'm going to fix it up in the winter once it's dormant i'm going to trim it and i'm going to shape it the way i want it but i'm just letting it recover because it was definitely beat up by the squirrels in the beginning of the year this over here is my peach tree this is a dwarf um white frost peach it's not so dwarf anymore that's probably uh, nine nine and a half foot and it's pretty tall now and it's grown quite a bit and it's getting thick this one at the bottom it's pretty thick you know about an inch and a half round so that's kind of nice the tin foil i have it there because the mice were climbing it so the mice couldn't climb it once they had the uh the tin foil on there check out the size of this tomato here my goodness so big then i have this amazing amazing dill plant here this is so good for the pollinators this plant is one and i dug it out from my other garden and it had been perennial there so it had been there for a few years and i dug it out and i put it in here and it's doing very well and it's encroaching in my path because I'm supposed to have a path here. But listen, the bees and the other pollinators love this plant. And they come in here and they stick around and they pollinate the other flowers. So plant something for the pollinators. I have this volunteer calendula here doing quite well. Then we have the Asian pear that I just showed you. And over here I am growing an African drum pumpkin or gourd so this one i'm growing just to get a big old gourd out of <laughs> so that i can play with it <laughs> the, or, or i'll have to see if i get one i planted this kind of late so i'm hopeful but i don't know what will happen but i'm excited hopefully we'll have quite a bit of production out of this guy check it out it's growing on the vine already and then here i planted some cucumbers uh, and the cucumber is not growing on the trellis that I gave it. So I got to figure that out. This one is already producing flowers. These are long beans that I really enjoy eating. So I hope they start producing very soon for me here. Because I, I need to eat some beans from the garden. The other day I went to a friend's garden. And he gave me a lot of green beans. And I ate them in two sittings. And it was delicious. So thank you my friend Hector for those bean, green beans, I really enjoyed them. I have a, see, I don't know if you guys saw the video of me planting some really late cucumbers. These are those plants. And what do you know, there's a cucumber already on here. So don't be discouraged if you're late to planting, plant it now and you should have fruits, no problem. You still have like 80 days before the last frost. So 
Don't be afraid to plant some of those fast maturing crops. This is my greenhouse. The greenhouse does not have the plastic on it right now. So it's just growing some summer vegetables. I am leaving a little bit of space in here so I can grow fall crops. But some of them have already sprouted themselves. These are mustard greens or mash, I think they are. And I think I need to come in here and harvest some of these because they're shading the plants that I've put in here. These are cayenne peppers and these are sweet potato vines. And I have quite a bit of them here. On this trellis here, I'm growing some green beans and some squash. I have, these are yard long beans or a type of, of long bean. And then these are bush beans. So I'm growing two side by side. And let's check out the size of this. This, this is a bean, a bean leaf. Check out the size of that. It's happy, I would say. This right here is more tomatoes. I have more tomatoes here on bamboo canes. And I have a watermelon that I want to show you guys. There it is. Right here. Sugar baby watermelon. Hopefully I'll have to be eating that very soon here. This is a candy roaster. North Georgia candy roaster. Somebody asked me in the comments the other day if I'm having problems with fine vores. I think I am with this vine right here. I think there's an issue with with the vine vores because this one becomes very wilted uh, when it gets hot. So you can see here it's yellowing. And I try to find the stem, but I don't know where I planted this thing. So I don't know if it's a vine vore or whatever, but this, this soil is very moist. We had a very good rain the other day and this soil is so moist. So it's not lack of water, so it is something else. But that's okay. Um, I have three of those plants growing, so hopefully, one at least one of them doesn't get affected by it. So it's all right. Then I have some sun marzanos right here. Check out this beautiful cluster. Then I have some more sun marzanos back here, and that one is looking pretty luscious. Yeah, so good. I got to do a harvest today. This is the musk melon I was telling you about. Check how beautiful this is. This is called Haley's Pride and it's so big and so nice. This tomato is supposed to be called Gladiator and it's supposed to be enormous, but it's not that big after all. I've seen bigger. Obviously you've seen my other one, the beefsteak over there is three times the size as this, but I'm excited to try it. It's a hybrid, uh, so F1 hybrid. So if I plant the seeds again, I will not get the same tomato. But uh, we'll see if the taste is good, then I'll keep growing it. But you can see here that the plant is not very prolific and not very productive. It's got five tomatoes on it and I can grow a different plant that will grow 10 or so. So you have to try new varieties, see if you like them. And if you don't like them, well, that's okay. You can just not plant them again next year. Well, that's a bit of a rambling video, but I hope you enjoyed seeing my garden and seeing how it's doing. Not everything is perfect in the garden. Nothing is perfect. Every single year there is failures and there is successes. So this year I'm rejoicing in my potato harvest and my garlic harvest. I did really well with those. And I'm hoping that the summer garden continues to get more productive as the year progresses. And I am counting on a bountiful fall harvest as well to make up for the losses in the spring so don't give up if you're having issues in the garden plant the plants give them some time and they will be okay thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up we are so close to 1000 subscribers and i really want to get there so if you can do me a favor and share this video with a friend who enjoys gardening that would be amazing until next time my friends keep on growing